What's the most frustrating thing about online school? My parents hovering over me. I'm Nicole Ellis, and this is The New Normal. I'm quarantining with my 15-year-old cousin. He's in ninth grade and has a lot to say about online learning. I feel like my algebra teacher and my history teacher, they, they both think that they're giving less work when they're really both giving us more and more work as the day goes on. So we thought we'd do an episode on it. And we asked you, our subscribers, what you all have to say. And y'all had a lot to say about it too. You go from seeing your friends and your teachers five times a week to only seeing them virtually for 45 minutes, two times a week. What are strategies you recommend for dealing with added domestic stress? How can I find a semblance of structure and kind of create an, a schedule for myself? There's always like those awkward like lulls in our video. There's more responsibility on me making sure I'm not procrastinating. You kind of feel like you need to say something so that the teacher doesn't feel awkward and like the students don't feel awkward. I've been told multiple times, just cut the TV off, get your homework done. How can I stay motivated, not only to do my classwork, but to also stay healthy physically and mentally? We talked to two experts that are uniquely equipped to help answer some of these questions or at least to give you some things to consider as you plan for the possibility of another semester like this in the fall. I am dealing with this on a professional level, obviously with patients, but also on a personal level, my kids are eighth grade, 10th grade, 12th grade, and sophomore in college. Dr. Birkins is a developmental psychologist and mom. So she works with teens both in her practice and at home. I remember the first time we went back, my students just looked at me and there wasn't really much to say other than I am here for you. Brittany Sinich is a survivor of the deadly shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. She taught drama and English, and not long before becoming a teacher there, she was a student. I was only 22 when we went through the tragedy, so for me, it was learning how to be strong for my students. It's definitely a hard feeling not knowing when you get to go back, when you get to see your students again. For me, my classroom is still there. It's still a boarded up crime scene and the date does say February 14th. I'm wondering what your advice would be for students as they try to manage that kind of existential stress with academic stress. The first thing is just to recognize that there is a lot going on and that having an expectation that you're going to have it all figured out, not have any stress about it, be perfect at all of this, that's an unreasonable expectation. A huge thing that I remember discussing was curriculum and grades. I didn't want them to put that pressure on themselves. Same thing like during a time like this, like I don't think students should put pressure on themselves to make the best grade. You know, a lot of people assume that teachers or administrators at schools have it all figured out. But this is a situation where nobody's ever had to deal with this before. We are going through something together. You know, at this point, it's not like the teacher is up here, the students down here learning. Like we are both right here and we are learning together. For a lot of the students we've spoken to, one of their big issues has been time management. How can students take a step back and be a little bit more accepting of their habits and their own workflow. So there's a couple benchmarks here that we can look at. Is how I'm structuring my time or how I'm managing this, is it allowing me to get done what I need to get done? If it is, then okay, maybe it's not a problem. Another benchmark is to look at, is what I'm doing working for me in terms of my stress, anxiety, overwhelm level? If the answer to both of those things is yes, then there's really no need to change how you're managing your time. What would be some advice for figuring out how to speak up? Email is a really nice option because email allows us to compose something, but then pause, edit it, maybe have a parent or you know somebody read through it and then you know hit send. The truth is, is if you can't 
be able to help yourself and advocate for yourself and come to us as teachers, we really can't help you. And I do think that takes a lot of courage for a student to do that. And I know it's not always easy. The reality is that life is full of ups and downs and times of less stress and times of greater stress. And so this is really an opportunity to learn some new strategies and some new ways of coping with that. So that's the silver lining. We're gonna keep telling stories like this, so stay tuned. For more stories like this one, subscribe to The Washington Post on YouTube.